Well, again, good morning. I certainly want to say a word of welcome to uh, any guest or visitor who's joining us today. I want to say welcome to our parish family. Welcome to Christ the Redeemer. And certainly hope that your, your worship with us today is filled with grace and feel that God has a word of blessing for us today, especially in the midst of the readings that we have. And, and gosh, every once in a while you can run across a, a set of scripture passages somewhat like we have this weekend that at first glance can perhaps not necessarily feel as connected to our lives or necessarily the images that, that speak to our ordinary lives, but a real word of encouragement about the readings today. Essentially, they talk about the end or they're beginning to prepare us for conversations about the end, the E-N-D. Isaiah's first reading is, is basically pointing to heaven it's Isaiah's prophetic image of what heaven's going to look like. And this mountain is the new Jerusalem and this eternal banquet from God, the father who is inviting all of us to, to celebrate with him in heaven. And our lives on earth are supposed to prepare us for this eternal banquet with God in heaven. That's what the first reading is essentially pointing to. And the gospel reading from Matthew 22, again, can, can, perhaps have an, an imagery of, um, of harshness with the reaction of the king to the person who didn't show up with the right wedding garment, but just essentially knowing that the wedding garment is, is in a parable. And we as Catholics don't necessarily read the Bible literally as much as we read the Bible literarily. And as we are in the literature style of a parable, the wedding garment is an image. And it's an image of responding appropriately to the invitation of the wedding. And as God is inviting us into a life of holiness, a life of virtue, a life of discipleship, um, as he's inviting us inevitably to go to heaven, we need to live our lives in an appropriate response to that, of course. And and that's what the, the gospel reading is about. So both readings just kind of rest with the invitation here that they, they're pointing to the end, as will the readings for the next several weekends. Why is that? Why is it that for the next several weekends here at Mass, we're going to begin to hear readings about the end? Well, it's October. And of course, October is uh, right next to November. We see December actually dawning ahead of us just a few weeks away now. And that means that our liturgical year is coming to a conclusion. Of course, the, the church does not mark time the way that the secular world does. In the United States of America, we celebrate the end of the year on December 31st, a new year on January 1st. But that's just here in America. There are lots of other places in the world that celebrate a new year on, on a different calendar. Many of them much more ancient than our own country. Many of them much more culturally appropriate to people across the world. And so lots of different cultures and countries celebrate time differently. And the church does not mark her time the way that the world does. The church marks her time liturgically in the, the liturgical seasons, in the rhythm of life as a church with Christ. And so the new liturgical year is going to start in Advent, just a few weeks away. And as one liturgical year is beginning in December, that means that a liturgical year that we're in now is inevitably beginning to come to a close. As one year begins, that means the current year ends. And so as we get into the back half of October and November, we're winding down, we're ending a liturgical year, and so we begin to talk about the end times. It's the rhythm of life, that once a year, we, we, we in rhythm, talk about the end. And so that's what the readings are about today, and just a word of encouragement, because that's what the liturgical seasons are designed to do. I love the liturgical seasons. We're in ordinary time now, and celebrating the ordinary of life, but I love Advent. I love Christmas. Lent, Easter, the liturgical seasons, they, they draw us into a rhythm of life with God. That's what the liturgical seasons do. They draw us into a rhythm of life with God. In fact, that, that's what seasons do. Seasons, they have a beginning and an end. Seasons, they have a very particular personality. Seasons, they have something to accomplish. 
The liturgical seasons have a beginning and an end. They have a very distinct personality from each other. The liturgical seasons have something to accomplish. So does nature. Mother nature's seasons, same thing. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Each of those seasons has a very distinct beginning and an end, has a distinct personality, has something very distinct to accomplish. We know that in Mother Nature's seasons. We have seasons in our secular world that that are abounding right now. We have hunting season in South Louisiana, right? Duck season's just around the corner. Deer season started a few weeks ago. We have sugarcane season, which is right around us. We can see the trucks on the road already, right? And the season of planting has is, is got to come to an end and the season of harvesting is beginning. And we know that in our agricultural culture here in South Louisiana, that seasons are amongst us. We have those seasons, football season, hurricane season. The new school year started just a few months ago and we're in a, 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 a new season in, with school. Of course, the big three are right, right around the corner, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, those those holiday seasons, of course, the shopping season starts with Black Friday and ends around Christmas. And so we just know that seasons are just a part of life. And when you know where you are, you know how to respond and you know where God might be acting in your life. That's the beauty of knowing the seasons. It's also important for us to know that each of those seasons has a beginning and an end. It has a very distinct personality and has something to accomplish. The seasons of life are just like that. We can be in a season of waiting, or you can be in a season of transition, a time in your life when you're waiting for something to happen, or a time in your life where you're moving. There's a transition. So you can be in a season of blessing, where things are going great. You can be in a season of struggle. You can be in a season professionally. You can be in a season financially. You can be in a season relationally in your marriage with your kids in your relationship with Christ physically you can be in like two seasons all at the same time like it's just important for us to know that seasons are a part of life and again when you know where you are you know what to do when you know where you are you know where where to where to find God active in your life and those seasons help us live in rhythm with God for example winter we know that winter has a very distinct beginning and an end. It has a distinct personality, and it has something to accomplish, right? It has a beginning and an end. Winter it begins when fall ends, and it ends when spring is upon us. Winter has a very distinct personality, right? The temperature drops in South Louisiana. Things get gray and cloudy, and it seems to rain a lot more. Things die in the winter, but they're supposed to. See, winter has something to accomplish. That, that, that death is necessary to pave the way for new life in spring. And what we know in Mother Nature is that winter, she's a season and she's got something to do and something to accomplish. Spring, right, has a very distinct beginning and an end. It has a very distinct personality. It draws life out of us. You want to plant. You want to be outside. The weather's great, Right. It's a great time in South Louisiana. It has something to accomplish. It's supposed to start life, generate life. So if we can befriend the season, then we can live in rhythm with God. And again, what we want to know today is that seasons have a beginning and an end, a distinct personality, and they have something to accomplish. Like the seasons of life. Raising kids. That's a season. You're not going to be doing that forever, thank God, right? But when you're raising kids, when you're in the season of of raising your kids, that's, boy, that's got a very distinct personality, doesn't it? You know, you get, a lot of times, your rhythm is thrown off. Um, I was laughing with my my sister one day about the living room, and, you know, just when you've got little kids, the house is dirty. It seems like the kitchen's always messy, and, and that's just the way it is when you have little kids, right? Or when you're raising teenagers, boy, that's a whole different season, whole different type of conversations, uh, different levels of trust and different response from both the parent and the child. So when you're raising, when you're raising kids, that's a very distinct season, isn't it? And it has a beginning and an end. You're not always going to be in that very busy or tough season. 
has a very distinct personality for parents, what happens in parents, how it affects your marriage, how you relate to perhaps even your own parents when you're raising your kids. All right, but it has something to accomplish, and it doesn't just accomplish something in the kids. A lot of times it does something in the parents also. You just got to know what season you're in. You can go through seasons in your marriage, right? The, 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 the type of bliss that is there after the honeymoon is very different than the adjustments that have to happen once you have your first child. Just look in marriage, and those are two different seasons. What's it like to be married when you're all by your when it's just you and your spouse versus what's it like to be married when you have kids versus what's it like to be married when your kids move out the house and you have to sometimes fall in love all all over again and and rediscover each other. You see there are seasons in marriage. There can be a season of struggling in your marriage. And boy that has a very distinct personality. It has a uh, its own set of anxiety, its own set of fear, its own set of vulnerability. But you know what? Every season has a beginning and an end. And it does have a personality, but it has something to accomplish. Lots of different seasons in life. You know, when I was, like, when I was in my 20s and I was at Nichols and very idealistic and looking at the future, I, I often wondered, what is life going to look like? And you know what? Life does not look now the way I, th- I dreamt it would look then. And I don't know anybody whose life unfolds exactly the way you dream it's going to look. You don't, you don't dream about hair loss or, or putting on weight or, um, you know, all the other things of life. It's, it, life doesn't unfold the way you thought it would. And like, the, like the season, perhaps, of taking care of your parents or being the one who's taken care of. You know, I, I see that season a lot here in our parish family where where many of you are now taking care of your own parents when, of course, they used to take care of you. And that brings with it, it's, it's, it's got its own very distinct personality, does it? You know, it brings with it its own set of grief and letting go and adjustments, and it impacts your marriage and your family life, sometimes your finances and your own personal rhythm of life. And, like, it, it has a very distinct personality, doesn't it? But you know what? It has a beginning and an end. It's not always going to be like that. Understanding where we are helps us understand where God is. A couple more seasons. Uh, You can be in a season where God is purifying you. There might be a season in your spiritual life where God has his, his heart locked in on a particular sin because he loves you and he, he wants to purify us of that. And boy, that has a very distinct personality to it, doesn't it? A lot of us don't necessarily feel feel comfortable looking at our own darkness or our own sin especially if it's an addiction maybe computer stuff or or financial stuff or substance abuse stuff or 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 any kind of any kind of addiction when the lord has really his loving gaze locked in on our addictions and we're in a season of facing that 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 you just need to know that that has a beginning and an end we're not always going to be struggling with that addiction but it has a very distinct personality. It, it requires courage and trust. And if we don't know that that's the season we're in, then it's easy for us to run from that. But it, God is trying to accomplish something in, in the purifying moments of life. Hey, in the season of waiting, boy, that can just feel like it's like it's just going to last forever. But it's just important for us to know that, that even the season of waiting has a beginning and an end. You won't wait forever. And the personality of waiting, that season, it can, it can often feel lonely. It can often feel like um, that nothing's happening and it's easy for us to panic there. But just know that even in the season of waiting, God is trying to accomplish something. And boy, it's not just about the answer to, to something that, that we want him to do. It's, it's oftentimes God is trying to do something in us. See, there's seasons in life, y'all. And when you know where you are, you know where to, 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 to find God with you. So you can be in a season of discernment or a season of retirement, a season of midlife, or a season of, of trying to find life after the funeral, life after a divorce, life after the, the death of somebody. You might be in a season of dating or you might be in a season of a transition into a new job. All of these moments of life, all these seasons... 
beginning and an end, distinct personality, and something to accomplish. So, so where are you? Where are you in life? What season are you in? Just think about that right now. What has your attention? Or where's your prayer of late? Again, you could be in a season at work and and, and a season at home or with your health or in your vocation. The reason I'm asking you this is because if, if, we, if we know where we are, then again, it's easier for us to know where God is. Just two encouragements around the season that you're in. I think we're going to probably find ourselves in a season where things are, 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 are blessed, or perhaps you're in a season where there's struggle. So just so a couple words of encouragement around those two seasons. If you're in a season of blessing, what do we want to do and what do we not want to do? Well, what do you, you want to do is acknowledge that, that Jesus is the source of the blessing, and when you're in a season of blessing, it's important to not move further ahead nor, nor, nor slower than, than the Lord. You want to stay still. You want to keep your eyes locked on him and let him bless you. And, and, and just know that, that seasons have a beginning and an end. And even a season of blessing might come to its conclusion. A lot of times we want to stay. We don't want to move to the next season. Like You don't want to grasp. You don't want to resist. If you're in a season of blessing... Just just keep your eyes on Christ. Let him do what he's trying to do. And it's not just about the, the good things that are happening. He's trying to affect something in us, in our hearts. And it could be a spirit of generosity or a new spirit of dependence. But if you're in a season of blessing, what you want to do is keep your eyes on Jesus and ask him to show you what is he trying to do in your heart. And what you don't want to do is is grasp at it or forget about Christ or even forget about the tough times that you came from. You don't want to forget. You don't want to forget God. And you don't want to stay there, try to stay there forever all on your own. You don't want to try to build a tent and grasp at the the blessings. We don't worship the blessings. We worship the God who often blesses us. and, And that's really important. Now, if you're in a season of struggle, if the exact opposite is true, boy, then, then I think the patterns are opposite, right? If you're in a season of struggle, a lot of times we want to get out of it. We want to jump out of it. We want to move ahead of God. And there's, there, there's wisdom in us not doing that either. If we're in a season of struggle, what do you want to do? You want to keep your eyes focused on the Lord and ask him what's he trying to accomplish in your heart can be a tough question because sometimes the personality of a season of struggle can be that there's a lot of noise and it can be difficult for us to hear God but just want to encourage you that he's with you every step of the way if you're in a season of struggle what you want to do is stay still in God and let him do what he's trying to do what you don't want to do is is grasp or medicate or fill your life up with sin or 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 try to get out of the struggle just because you don't like it there you can just keep your eyes on the Lord. So what's one thing that we can do this week? One practical thing that we can do this week is simply ask yourself, where are you in life? Over the next six weeks, when we gather here together as a family, we're going to talk about the very six particular seasons of life, six of the most common seasons of life. But before we get into the particularities of those seasons, we just need to ask ourselves, where are we now? So this week, what we can do is just ask yourself, where, where are you in life? Where does God have you? Because that's where he is. He's with you right there. And ima- imagine if, if life had meaning and direction right now. Imagine if the struggles was transformed just by wisdom. Imagine if you knew exactly where to go and how to get there. What if we all were in touch with God in the season that we were in? Imagine what our parish family would look like and what our community would look like. Imagine if we didn't have to struggle anymore with the struggle. 
Or imagine if we didn't take for granted the blessings that's there. Just imagine if our spiritual antenna was attentive to God who's with us in the midst of everything. Seasons. They have a beginning and an end. They have a very particular personality and they have something to accomplish. Wherever you are, the Lord is with you. Let's be attentive to the particularities of where you are. Let's be attentive to the seasons of life. God bless you.